Maine has a state flag that's like 23 others, a state soda that's not made in Maine, and a state song that very few people know. Now we have a Maine state ballad that's about a felon. Griff Sherry wrote the song. He's in The Ghost of Paul Revere, and he says it's their most requested song, even when they're playing in the South. My name is Andrew Tozier. I'm a child of Litchfield, Maine. The song tells the story of Andrew Tozier, who is the color bearer for the 20th Maine at Little Round Top how he got to arguably the most crucial spot in the most crucial battle in the most crucial war in the history of the world has distinct main roots, according to Tom Desjardins, who wrote the book on Little Round Top. It was a couple of days before the battle, the regular color sergeant turned up drunk. So they put him under arrest, and somebody turned around and said, who's the senior sergeant, which is always the color bearer, and because Andrew had been in the second main, he'd been in more years, so he was senior. He said, all right, you take the flag. Tozier had earned the honor. He did not shrink from responsibility, fought like a beast, and perhaps because of that, had the unfortunate characteristic of getting wounded a lot. Stalwart, tough, probably bullheaded. Singer-songwriter Griffin Sherry was drawn to Tozier as a character. You give your colors to the toughest man in your regiment, for sure, and they, they certainly picked it with Tozier. He wasn't going down um, without a fight. And what a fight. Five charges from the rebel soldiers of Alabama and Texas were repelled by the 20th Maine Regiment, which was seeing fierce combat for the first time. They had just scrambled onto the high ground with an order from Colonel Joshua Chamber. Stand back. We are the boys of Maine. Chamberlain, who we should all love and admire, was many things, including perhaps the best writer on the battlefield. Later, he recalled looking through a hole in the smoke and spying the heroic Andrew Jackson Tozier, colors clutched by his elbow, firing a rifle abandoned by a stricken comrade. Well, you do have that moment where Andrew Tozier has been kind of left behind by the 20th Main Line, and he's halfway down the hill, and he's standing with the colors in one arm and a rifle at his hip. He's almost out of ammunition, and he's screaming at the 15th Alabama as they're firing up the hill. We know the story, most of it true, about how the 20th charged down the hill, running the rebels down into a ravine and saving the day for the Union. Chamberlain offered to make Tozier an officer right on the spot. Tozier, who was illiterate, turned that promotion down, went on to fight another year and was actually shot in the head before returning home to a life of crime. From his background, it's not all that surprising that he, he got caught up with a relative and another friend and ended up on this multi-county crime spree, stealing <laughs> everything from coats to cows to what have you. A great warrior, Andrew was a poor criminal. Andrew would end up being sentenced to five years of hard labor at the Maine State Prison. And there's a knock at the cell and somebody's here to see you. Turns out it's the governor of the state. But more than that, it was Joshua Chamberlain, his former commander. He said, I got good news and bad news. The good news is, I'm going to pardon you. You don't have to serve your time. The bad news is, you're coming to live with me, and I'm going to reform you. Tozier and his wife Lizzie moved into Chamberlain's Brunswick home. Chamberlain paid Tozier as a handyman servant and taught his former sergeant to read and write. A.J. became a fisherman on Shabig before returning to Litchfield, where he restlessly lived out his days, dying in 1910. Tosher's able to comfortably move back to Litchfield with his entire family and live there for the rest of his days, um, which I think is this really incredible redemption story of someone who was, you know, had a hard life and down on their luck, but because of their actions, how they influenced certain people, they were given a second chance, and, and Tozier used it to be a member of his community. I guess. Proud and true, you are a union Griff says the ballad of the 20th Maine is their most requested song. It captures the spirit of a moment when a less than perfect man rose up to offer all that he had for his country. We are the boys of I left so much out of that story. My favorite aspect of it, though, is that Griff and the ghost of Paul Revere were playing at a Bernie Sanders rally. Tom popped out of his office at the State House. He works for the Republican Party. And we all come together Saturday night 
to watch Bill Green's meme.